Russian gas has started flowing again through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline after 10 days of maintenance work. But the German government has sped up efforts to find alternative sources of energy, wary that Russia might turn off the tap for good. Jenny Hill reports from Duisburg. Germany thought this was the fuel of the past. Now coal is keeping the country afloat. As Russia restricts its gas, Germany is seeking other sources of energy, and that includes firing up old coal power stations. So Martina's barges are busy, but she sees the damage done by Vladimir Putin's gas war. Of course it's good for us, she says, that we're transporting so much coal, but it's a fine line, because industry here might have to shut down soon if the gas runs out. Few here trust Russia, but Germany relied on its gas. It's painfully exposed. Russian gas has powered this country's economy. Going without it, industry leaders warn, could have catastrophic consequences, perhaps even trigger a recession. And if Germany struggles economically, so does Europe. Just when they thought it couldn't get worse. This hotel is still recovering from COVID shutdowns. Now its energy bills are soaring, and if gas supplies aren't secured, Germany could face rationing. <laughs> if we don't get gas anymore, we can't cook. The kitchen closes. We won't be able to heat either. I don't believe it'll come to that, but we have to act now. It would be the death of hospitality. Even as Europe swelters through a heat wave, experts are looking to the winter. Germany's hoping to import liquefied natural gas to boost reserves. It doesn't have enough to get through the cold months. It could be bad, there could be shortages if we do not prepare enough. And that is that we have to import gas from other sources as well. We have to diversify the import even further. We have to fill the uh, storages as high as possible. We need to get the gas demand down and also to increase renewables more. Vladimir Putin has forced Germany's climate-conscious government back to coal, at least in the short term. He wants to trigger political and economic chaos in the West. But he may yet accelerate European efforts to abandon Russian energy, perhaps even fossil fuels altogether, for good. Jenny Hill. Well, Jenny now joins us live from Duisburg. Uh, Jenny, there will be relief that uh, gas is flowing through Nord Stream 1 again, but the concerns are far from over. Exactly. That relief, I think, is very much tempered this morning, not least because a spokesman for Nord Stream has indicated that the gas coming through the pipeline again is only flowing at something like 40 percent of its capacity. You may remember that before this planned 10 day shutdown for maintenance, it happens every year, we're told, uh, Russia had actually reduced the amount of gas that was flowing into Germany and then, of course, onto Europe. I don't think anyone in Berlin or, for that matter, any other European capital is under any illusion that they can trust Vladimir Putin to continue supplying the continent with Russian gas. And that is why we are seeing such a scramble amongst not just German politicians, but European ones too. Uh, in the last day or two, the EU has asked member states to try to cut their gas consumption by 15 per cent. Everyone is keenly aware, despite the heat waves sweeping across Europe, of the coming winter and what could ensue if those gas storage facilities aren't full. They're not by no means full enough here in Germany, something like 66 per cent of their capacity at the moment. Experts say they need to be full to 80 or 90 per cent if Germany is to get through the winter. And you've heard in the report there the dire warnings coming from industry. No one here is in any doubt at all of the very grave economic consequences that could ensue if this country, if Europe, doesn't secure energy supplies. Well, since the start of the war in Ukraine, Germany has managed to reduce its reliance on Russian gas from 55 percent to about 35 percent. But it's going to need to do more than that, isn't it? What are the alternatives to Russian gas? 
Well, it's provoking a great deal of political and public debate, as you can imagine. So, first of all, the German government is, as you saw in the report there, looking at liquefied natural gas. Um, now, it's going to a number of different countries to try and secure that. Its main problem is that it needs terminals with which to receive that gas, and it doesn't have any of those right now. So the government is very hastily trying to hire what they call floating terminals, essentially great big barges which take the, the gas in. Um, they're also hoping to build a more permanent structure. Um, they're also looking at all sorts of other options which are causing some political debate. For example, this country is decommissioning its nuclear power stations. Now, to some in the government, it's a coalition government, don't forget, the idea of halting that process is anathema. Um, to others within that government, the idea of, for example, trying to save energy by imposing speed restrictions on German motorways is equally painful. So there's a lot of discussions going on around that. People here are being asked to save energy on an individual level, being asked, for example, to take shorter showers. But then, of course, there's the third option, and that's looking at renewable sources of energy. This is a climate-conscious government. It was hoping to do that. Some, if they're looking at this from an optimistic perspective, will say it may be that Vladimir Putin is going to force their hand and that actually in the long term, Germany, perhaps Europe, may emerge a cleaner country because it's having to find other sources of energy and it may in the end have to walk away from those fossil fuels. Well, a very pressing matter as the winter approaches. Jenny Hill, thank you very much for joining us from Duisburg.